Um, hold this meeting to order. We good at about 7.05. Mr. Welcome home. Thank you. Six. Six. Seven oh six? Six oh five. Six, I beg your pardon. Six. That's the new Not regime, the yes. <laughs> we'll be talking about the clocks later. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Anyway, it's great to have you back. Thanks. We had a restful fall. Yes. Thanks. Great. Um, okay, so uh, you're going to approve the minutes from our last meeting of November 8th. Anybody have any questions, comments, edits, deletions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so moved. Thank you. Um, Patty? Uh, so I did send you your reports, <clears throat> um, and the I'll start really uh, getting into um, where our savings are well when the budget process starts because that's when I really start tearing lines apart. So, but there's nothing um, I'm concerned about uh, right now. Uh, overages. Uh, some lines are over, but our function codes in total are still under budget. So, uh, we're doing okay. Uh, you have eight warrants to sign tonight um, in the amount of $124,450.38. And um, I would, with the chair's permission, I'd like to take the budget calendar out of order and discuss it now because um, Dr. Carey okay. is releasing me early okay. from the meeting. <laughs> okay. We like to call her Bob Cratchit because she's working so hard on the budget. <laughs> no, I do. I should say we. She's working really hard on the budget, so it's just been kind of a. Those are long days in that. So yeah. All right. So yes, you can, of course you may. Okay. So um, it's in your packet. So this week mm -hmm. we've been meeting with all our principals. Um, well, we had a kickoff meeting last week with our principals, and Dr. Carey handed out some worksheets that she wanted each principal to complete and bring to their meetings, which are happening this week. I believe Tina, we're meeting with you on Friday, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we'll continue to through December 29th, start compiling all the data and look at the, <coughs> our line items. And um, January 3rd is our first school committee meeting. January 3rd, is that right? So, so on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Deerfield's first. I've been working on, I thought you guys were the week after. So we'll bring our first version, first draft uh, to you guys on January 3rd. Uh, February 7th, we'll be making any changes that you um, asked for after looking at the uh, January 3rd. Um, sometime February, March, the town usually likes us to come over and do a presentation. Uh, March 7th, we'll hold our public hearing and you will vote the final budget in your meeting right after that. Uh, the Deerfield Town Meeting is April 30th and your town elections are on May 7th. And that is what we're going off as a timeline right now. Okay. Looks fairly uh, similar to prior years. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Okay. How's Tina holding up? Is this coming down the pipe? We'll see Friday. Got this. Got this. Great. All right. Uh, anybody have any comments, questions, concerns about this? No. No? Okay. Great. So you'll have something to look, us, for us to look at on the next meeting? January 3rd, yeah. yeah. Okay. So everybody have a happy holiday and a happy new year, and we'll see you in January. You too. Great. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, is there any public comment this evening? No? Okay. We will move right ahead uh, into unfinished business, which is an update on our search for principal, which I think Lou needs more than her own yes. And this is um, the corrected version. One went out on a small typo. The, um, proposed timeline um, is a little bit altered from uh, the original. We're going to give, um, we're going to ask for the parent reps and the teacher reps to be selected by the first week in January. That's the only shift, um, giving a little more time. But the, um, we have now uh, announced to the faculty that there will be two reps from the SES, I mean from the Deerfield faculty to serve on the committee. We'll be um, seeking two parent reps, and I've contacted the uh, Deerfield PTA <clears throat> to conduct that process. Um, we'd like to have a representative of the school committee on the um, search committee. 
And um, I'd like to um, ask for a representative of the Deerfield community at large so that they can participate in this as well. So there'll be, um, and also there will be one elementary school principal from uh, the, the district, and um, Ben Barshevsky has agreed to serve. He served, um, it's helpful to have a sitting principal serve on the committee as well. So there will be um, seven members and myself facilitating it. Um, so where we are is um, I've um, spoken with the uh, representatives of the Deerfield uh, Teachers Union uh, about developing a process to select two representatives from the faculty and spoken with the De uh, Deerfield PTA. So this is the process. We will um, begin in earnest in January when we convene the search committee. We will be uh, surveying families and surveying the staff about the um, characteristics of what they hope to see in a, pr a permanent principal. Um, and those will happen in January. And then we will um, advertise using um, the national tool, SchoolSpring, which is a website that all school people looking for jobs look there. That's the place to go. Um, and we have a subscription when, whenever we post positions. That's where we go. And hopefully by um, the end of February, we'll be able to have um, a review of all of the applications. Usually we give four to five weeks for people to read it, review, and then submit their applications. Um, we will be meeting with applicants in March and, um, and then bring finalists to meet with faculty, staff, and the community, um, hopefully end of March, early April, depending on uh, whether the weather cooperates, if we have a lot of snow days, you know, so this is the projected timeline. And then hopefully by the end of April, we will have a permanent principal for Deerfield. So that's the timeline, and that's where we are in the process. On the back is um, just what was distributed to the faculty today. And um, we, you should be seeing uh, something posted on the website for families to notify them once the uh, PTA has determined what their process will be. So that's where we are. Any <coughs> questions? So, no. Um, any questions? No? So, so we will get back to you by... First week of January. When you tell us you need some one of us. To yeah. We hope to have the first meeting on January 11th, which is a Thursday. Um, second week back so that um, whomever is chosen from all of these different constituencies can, um, I want to put the date out there so people know when the first meeting will be. Yep. We'll start at 3.30. The meetings will be after school so that um, faculty members don't need to miss class to attend. And um, like to have one parent focus group, hopefully in the evening, so that uh, community people in the Deerfield um, families Deerfield families can come and talk to us about what they're hoping to see. Mm -hmm. So, the Deerfield community representative. Um, I'd like to think about who who might represent. There are a few people I know who've been in town for a very long time. I welcome your suggestions, but um, folks who know the school well have been big supporters of the school. I have a few people in mind that I'd like to. Um, invite to serve to represent the community because they are community members and they they know us and are big supporters of the school. So, I, I do have a, a short list in my head of, of folks who I know would do a great job. Whether they're available, yeah. we'll see. Great. Probably good that they have no current connection to the school. Is that your goal? Correct. Yeah. Nobody in the school, nobody in the school. I'm thinking of past parents who live in the community. And um, yeah. so, you know, I'll run a few names by you, but I, I do have a, a, few, a few ideas about people who I think would represent the Deerfield community and who know the school well. Great. Anybody else have that? OK. Um, Moving right along, we have dealt with our budget calendar. So, Ms. Lusko, if we can turn it over to you now for a school building maintenance update. Okay. Is that right? um, what I can do is, is walk through 
what, what I was really prepared to do was walk through some of the projects that got funded this year, um, what's done, what isn't, and what, where, where we are on them and when they will be. Okay. Um, there was a, a project to do the a drainage work at the entry foyer here. The, the town of Deerfield helped out with that. That was a really good project that got done over the summer and also a little bit of work on a drainage whale off to the side of that. Um, we had an emergency repair. The water heater in the school failed and we had kind of a rush project um, to replace that. That's done. Um, we did the project to um, tint the windows. My understanding is there was some concern at one of the last meetings about how that functions at night. And unfortunately, the window tint tends to reflect light, so during the, during the, it works very well for what it's designed, which is during the day. But at night, it, it does leave the building, you know, where just like it would be without the tent. Um, we had a small chunk of money to replace the washer dryer in the school. I had somebody come look at that, and he fixed it and said it was in good enough shape that it really didn't need to be replaced. So. We've got that 100% operational, and, and uh, I would not spend the rest of that money. Um, we were given money to do flooring in four rooms, uh, three rooms, excuse me, and we've got one of the three done. Um, in the first of the year, I'll bid the other two rooms and get those done. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, that's a project that I can get done easily you know, on the weekends or school breaks or that sort of thing. Um, we've got two chunks of money uh, for dealing with some issues with hardware in the building. Um, that's been a difficult project to figure out exactly what we want to spend and where we want to spend it. Um, I've got pricing now from someone to completely do a couple of double sets of doors. And I think we can do with the money we have probably three or four total sets, and that's about the number of, of, of doors that are really giving us big problems. Um, Tina has also asked that the keying in this building has evolved into something that's really difficult to work with. Um, <laughs> that's happened in a lot of our schools. Um, the schools were originally designed um, with a good master key system, and very quickly, Without good key control, people gave out too many masters and they lost the security. So what's evolved and happened here over the years is they've put a whole bunch of keys in that are off the system. So there's no master and there's a big, huge ring of keys. So what I need to do is, is spend some time with our locksmith that we use. We use Smith Lock out of Greenfield, it's really good. We will probably end up with two keys in the building we'll end up with the old master key that serves most of the classrooms that don't have to be horribly secure. And then we'll take all the other areas that have to be secure and we'll build a new master system on that. So we'll have a master that gets very limited distribution and then sub keys under that that'll work into all of the areas. And that's something, It's it's been a, a very, busy fall this year. We, in a way, we were, I was lucky. We, I was given a lot of funding, um, but it, it, it was spread through five schools and there was a lot of priority projects. So I've been a little slow on some of them, but we'll easily get them done within this budget year. Um, we also have a chunk of money to fix the clocks in the building. That's a project I've held off on some. Our IT director had some interest in the clocks and intercoms and how they integrate with the phone systems. We've resolved that. I've got a real emergency project happening with the intercoms and clocks at Conway right now. That project will be done in the next three or four weeks. And as soon as that one's done and I see that it works okay, I'm gonna probably put the exact same class clock system in this building. I've had this one bid. It's right about at the amount of money that we have available. So that's a good project, and I would predict we'll be 100% done on that by the end of February. The money that we have for smoke detectors and fire alarms, that's a chunk of money I asked for based on the 
excuse me, it was originally it was smoke detectors. Um, it's a chunk of money that I asked for based on the fact that the smoke detectors in this building are getting to an age where they should be replaced and we've been having problems getting replacements for them. When I really got dealing with fire alarm companies to replace the detector, <coughs> what I found is the, the ones that are here are very hard to get and very expensive. And so what I've discovered is I can upgrade the existing alarm panel almost entirely and replace all of the smoke detectors with a newer model for almost the same amount of money. So I'm within a few thousand dollars of the budget. I've been trying to negotiate that down. Um, I'll either come back at one of the next meetings and ask for a little more money or maybe we can make it work in this year's operating budget. But what I'm going to do with that chunk of money is in, in addition to replacing all the smoke detectors, I'm also going to upgrade the existing um, fire alarm system. So we should be in good shape when that one is done. And there's two other projects that are outside projects. There's a sidewalk in the back of the building. We've got money for paving. Um, I've got a bid on that. It's about the amount of money we have. And also we've got a chunk of money to uh, pave the parking lot lines. Both of those projects I couldn't get done before the weather closed in. I'll get them both done just as soon as the, uh, in, in the spring. Can you paint, paint the lines? Yeah. Said, okay. Yep, painting the parking lot lines. Well, let's go to punch list. Thank you. You're, you're right. Uh, the good work you do to support the quality of education. It's much appreciated. Great. Tina's been great to work with. <laughs> we meet frequently. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I just want to. I, I also want to. You know, when you started the meeting, you actually were saying the right time. So now I'm following what you're saying. <laughs> 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 The old clock time. system <laughs> is an old console. It's very difficult to reset the time on. We do have to manually reset it for daylight savings time, and all of the clocks don't always take. The new clock system that we're going to put in here um, is, is wire, it's wireless. All the clocks talk to one another, and there's one main component that talks to a GPS, so it gets the same signal that your cell phone gets, and then all of the phone, all of the clocks talk to each other, and they all reset, so it really becomes a no-brainer, and when we have one fail, we'll have some spares here, and it'll be really easy to replace. We can't, well, I can, I can buy replacements for those, but they're from a special company, and they're more money than really they're worth. We've replaced some of the clocks with the clocks that aren't centrally reset. So yeah, it's a pain in the neck keeping everything at the same time with what we have now. No, not bad. <laughs> All right, super. Well, again, thank you for coming in and thank you for that. All right. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> um, MCAS presentation, Ms. Law, if you're up for well, going in. Well, I'll do it briefly because our, um, our projector isn't bright enough to um, to really project uh, adequately. So, um, in overview, this year, in 2017, in the spring, all of our students in grades three through six who were participating in MCAS took them online. This was a big shift, doing a computer-based assessment, and um, we did a lot of practice, teachers did a lot of practice, and we're actually pleased with how well the students adjusted to that transition. I think um, as adults, we were more anxious about that transition than students were. There were some challenges. There was a lot of manipulating of tools online, um, flipping between screens. It's a more rigorous and more challenging test. Um, MCAS hasn't been completely overhauled in 20 years. So this was the first big overhaul. It matches the new, more rigorous state standards. Um, all of our curriculum is aligned with those state standards. Um, and so what we said to the teachers for this first transition, because the state um, it was only required that fourth graders and eighth graders take it online. We chose as a district to ask all of our students to do it so that we could see where the glitches were, we could see what that transition was like, and then this year, 
when it counts because they gave us a free pass for 2017. If your school elected to have all of the students take it online, if they didn't do so well, it didn't count. So we'd have no level this year. Each school is uh, counted level one, level two, level three, level four. When the school report cards came out, that was blank for Deerfield. It just came out this week. Because we made that choice, we were helping the state out by piloting it with third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So we made that choice because now this year, when it does count, our third graders, this will be the second time they did it. Our teachers will know where the glitch is, where we need to support, how we can make sure it works, what the best setting. We did them primarily in classrooms with our Chromebooks. So students were reading on Chromebooks, manipulating, using um, the tools on the Chromebook. And um, although the outside performance wasn't as strong as usual, compared to the state average, our kids' performance was compared to all the kids who also took it on paper. So the, it's a little bit like apples and oranges. In other words, in third grade, most, about 50% of kids in, in Massachusetts took the paper pencil version in third grade. Our students' scores were compared to all the kids. So the kids who took it on paper, and the kids who took it on computer. So our scores were a little bit artificially depressed. They weren't as good as usual, but this was a transitional year. This year, um, one of the things we did look at, though, is even compared to their peers, our students did about average compared to all the kids who took it with paper pencil and all the kids who took it um, by computer in English language arts, but the math performance wasn't as strong overall. So that has caused us to take a really deep look at our math practices. And we're spending the rest of our um, early release time, we have many times that we're looking at math data, achievement data, um, math instructional strategies. So that information was interesting to us to look at it and say, why in the more challenging test where they had to write essays on a laptop at eight years old, <laughs> why did they do better than how they did in the math. So we're, it, it caused us to um, look at our professional development and look carefully at how much time are we spending on math each day? Are we spending as much time as we need to for kids to reach these higher, more rigorous standards? So that's the MCAS report. It's, it's a challenging test, <clears throat> but um, our kids tackled it with, I think, uh, in, impressive uh, calm and success. So. Did you happen to uh, reach out to any other districts who also did, chose to do what we, what did, we did and see whether they experienced a similar uh, sense that they didn't do as well as they would have done? If done well, the within the district, there was some variability. <clears throat> so within Union 38, yeah. we had some pockets of where kids did even better in math than they did in English language arts. But, well, so how did that happen? Did Oh, and our whole district right. did it by so, computer. Okay. So, so we're, that's why we're looking at math, and one of the things we're looking at is time on, it's one of the reasons we switched from the sixth grade model we had, because the sixth grade model we had did not allow for the amount of time students needed in sixth grade math to be successful. And we have years of data to show Deerfield sixth graders did not perform as well as sixth graders in the rest of the district in mathematics, because Part of it is time on learning. And so the switching of the classes did not allow adequate time. Many of the other sixth grades spend 90 minutes a day on math. <clears throat> so we needed to look at that. And so that's why the, the, the former model was not conducive to high performance for sixth graders. Right. OK. Now, I'm just curious about also, but overall, what you were talking about. When all the kids took it. There aren't a lot of districts where all of the students in third, yeah. fourth, fifth, and sixth took it on computers. Yeah. Um, overall, we did fine, about state average. Right, but you're saying we didn't do as well as we usually do score we above do. state average. Right. Yes. And you're attributing that somewhat, hopefully, to the fact that it was a transitional year. So. I, I think so. Also, I blatantly said to teachers this year, because we're getting a free pass on the scores. Yeah. I want our focus to be making children feel comfortable with the setting sure. of having to take it on a Chromebook 
in your classroom. So teachers spent more time acclimating kids to all of the tools, the pull-down menus, yeah. than historically they spent a lot of time practicing MCAS questions. Yeah. So we didn't, and really, I said that the scores aside, we want this shift to be as stress-free for our students as possible. And I think our teachers did a marvelous job of helping the students feel comfortable. I don't know how comfortable they felt as adults, but the students really um, did fine with that. Yeah, I'm not challenging or questioning anything that you had to do. I was just curious whether any other districts you reached out to who also first year on Chromebook, whether they also found that they Maybe yes, well. and even in some of our high-performing, um, historically very high-performing grades in high-performing schools did not do as well as they usually do in the transition to the computer this year. It's a little apples and oranges. It's a little tricky. I mean, I know that the, the state has all kinds of statisticians equating the scores, but that's a math trick. Uh, when we actually watch children, we know what was hard for them and what wasn't, and we know that for some students, taking on a computer was more conducive to just pressing the answer than when you had to fill it in with a bubble. So students who struggled were more um, likely to check out and just press the answers. It's easier. So for some students, struggling students, I think it was um, more fun, but they didn't necessarily um, focus as well. For other students, they enjoyed, some of the students said, we liked it better. It was more fun to read it on a computer. One of the things we noticed is, even though we have um, practiced solving problems, scrap paper, historically when students have um, done MCAS, there's scrap paper for the math. Because they were on the computer, although it was provided, many teachers said they didn't use the paper. They just went right to trying to find the answer because somehow, even though it was provided and encouraged, you can't, in the middle of the test, say, remember, use your paper. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that, right? So um, for some students, they forgot that they could use scrap paper. So these are things we learned through this. And so we can, this year, practice. Here's some practice questions. Now, everybody, use your paper and show me on your paper. We can acclimate them. So there were, there were some growing pains. Can I ask a little question? Yes. Just a curiosity. I, I don't know. Um, is, is there a toll on handwriting and penmanship? I'm guessing that time is dedicated to teaching typing at younger ages. Um, we still you... have a program called Handwriting Without Tears that was yeah. designed by um, occupational therapists years ago. It's, it's the, and now we do Keyboarding Without Tears, which is a similar program. We still have handwriting. How much time people have to spend practicing it is um, certainly reduced because we do need to teach keyboarding now as young as end of second grade because students now will be taking tests in third grade and they will need keyboarding skills to take the test. So, you know, time is finite. But we still <coughs> officially have a handwriting program, and handwriting still actually is important to brain development. Even kids who keyboard, it's a very different um, experience for the mind-body association to keyboard than the, what we call the proprioceptic <coughs> feedback to putting a pen to paper actually stimulates a different part of the brain. So it still does matter. It's just, yes, we, the, the day didn't get any longer. So how do we balance the need for students to know how to keyboard and to teach them and practice that before they develop bad habits? And you know, once you develop certain habits in keyboarding, it's hard to undo, just like with handwriting. But we still teach. I mean, we have, first, we have teachers yes, here. We, still te <laughs> we still teach yep. students to form their letters. And it's, it's the best program because it, it really has been carefully researched. And the handwriting is far better than what it was years ago when we didn't have this handwriting without tears. I'm amazed at what I see sometimes first and second graders, the kind of letter formation they have versus what we used to have. So we still do it. Any other yeah, no. questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. The, uh, Lynn, the school improvement plan. Is that you? Yeah.
Um, I have a couple copies. I don't know if we have a school improvement. Um, the school council, some of the school council is here. So I didn't know if people wanted to see the final copy. Um, so we started with the district um, improvement plan and we aligned our goals with the um, district plan. We got faculty and family input and um, I don't know how in depth you want me to go into this, but as you can see, our, our areas of focus are educational programming, community relations, communication, school culture, and special education um, tiered instructions. Most uh, areas have two goals, and um, there's activities that can show that we're, not, we're, we're making progress on our goals. And, um, and how is that assessment going to be done? How, how often is the. We meet times again a year in or? February. Yeah. Um, Irene, was it February? I, I think we have a January. January, and then again in February. We're meeting frequently. We met uh, about five times, correct me if I'm wrong, to, write, to get this plan up and rolling and running with a, a, all the input. And I think it's pretty comprehensive. It was an interesting um, process because the parents' feedback and the faculty and staff feedback kind of matched, so it was, a, it was good. And in a sense, it made it easier for us to create a plan. And Irene, I did add in, um, I did take your suggestion about stakeholders, so I don't know if you wanted to see the yeah. bottom, and I did put a little thing on the bottom to, um, you didn't see that, so I just wanted to make sure that you see that. Sean, let me get you one. Yeah, a little formatting of uh, change and I did the stakeholder thing. You guys have seen it. It's kind of a funny thing, this uh, school council, in terms of like another layer of, I mean, it's a, good, it's a good thing, but I'm saying it's sort of, you know, they ask you to do it every um, year, but in reality, the goals, which just seems like nice goal setting, yeah. are goals that aren't, are hopefully going to be around in all of your, our future school improvement right. plans, right? This is a two-year plan, so, yeah. and we'll meet frequently within the yeah, two yeah. years, but it's good. It's I'm good for... It's a good thing to always sort of reflect yeah. back to and yeah. see how we're doing. But, um, yeah, and it will help um, drive the budget process this year as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. We appreciate all the hard work that yes. went into this. Whoever's Thank you. On the School Improvement Committee, School Council. Green, Sean, Kathy, and, and Lori. Staff and faculty. Yeah. Input, thank you. Um, I believe this is something that uh, we are required to actually vote on and approve. So, um, you move to approve the 2017 uh, to 19 school improvement plan. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. So moved. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. <coughs> and moving on to the next chart. Yeah. And your superintendent's goals. Um, so again, I want to thank um, everyone. All five school committees um, allowed me to develop a uh, superintendent's advisory committee. We, uh, I worked really hard. I went back to the committee to the drawing board on. Um, <coughs> here again. Is this the same that you emailed us sometime? I ago? did. Yeah. So okay. I emailed this to you earlier because I really wanted you to look at it. And uh, I worked on really coming up, just essentially using the same goals but fleshing them out more with more information and more. And the committee met. We worked three hours on them. And it was a great process. And I really enjoyed it. And I just, their support and your support was great. So as you know, um, superintendents, Pretty much superintendents and principals, they have district improvement goals, student goals, and professional goals, um, student achievement goals. So my goals are pretty much what they were. Uh, my first district goal is communication between the central office, the school sites, and families. We're continuing to strengthen that through collaborative efforts. Um, and. Uh, we're also continuing to work on updating the new school committee policies that were recommended by the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. This is going to be a daunting task again because there's many that were just a change of a word that we were able to update. So for instance, instead of the word handicap, we change it to disability. 
but there's also 99 um, policies that really need to have a little bit of changing, either a phrase, a paragraph, or the whole meaning. And so the committee is then formed, Mary is the rep from um, Deerfield, and we'll be doing that as soon as we get back. I'll put those t meetings together. Everyone has a binder, and hopefully we can really knock out quite a few on, at each session. But they will all have to come to the school committees, all five school committees, to be approved, and uh, then we'll be able to put them in. But the laws change quickly, and we need to keep up with them. And then the other um, district improvement goal is the budget process, uh, including a financially sustainable vision, will be co uh, committed, completed in collaboration with school committees, district administrators, and other stakeholders. And so we've already started that, as Patty alluded to. So what, last year I just followed what had always come, but this year one of the uh, school committee members asked me to just dwell deeper into the budget and really um, get more involved and be out there and talking about it. So what I'm working on now is uh, each budget will have a PowerPoint that will actually, not just the, the numbers, but will speak to where we are, where we're going. Um, each department meets with each principal. So what I've asked the principals to do is um, not only you know, come to the meeting, but to develop a narrative, to talk about what, they, what they're doing in their school, what are the great stuff, uh, where's the vision and the plan for the school, where do we want to see the school heading, and um, I've also asked the uh, curriculum coordinator and the early childhood coordinator, the technology director, the facilities director, as well as the principal to, we're all sitting down at the same table and we're all looking at everyone's budget and, and the special ed director. And everyone, I've asked everyone to have a dream, a vision of something that's not going to change, but where do we see the school? What, what do we want to do? What, what do we want DES to be like in five years? What are we working towards? So it's not just, you know, we want this money so that next year we can have, we really, and it's not just we want money to get new doors. Where do, where do we see, do we see ourselves, uh, a lot of discussion around curriculum. Do we see ourselves using textbooks less or more? Where's the social studies going? What are we doing in science? Are we using books or are we using software? What about our software line? What about our technology line? And all of these conversations come together and the collaboration of everybody together talking about it. And what that's doing um, for all of us is, is just opening up those lines of communication. And I know one of the directors said it just really helps to hear everyone's perspective. And when I come to speak to you, and when I go to the town meetings, and when I talk to the PTA, I will be able to say, this is where we were, this is where our money went to here, this is where we're going next year, this is what we want to do, and these are our dreams and hopes. So that's the district goals. Um, the student achievement goals, again, the pre-K-6, um, we're just really excited about the science that Louise is bringing in with all the PD. I was here on Friday, they had the Hitchcock Center doing PD on, and let me get it straight. I, 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 because I'm thinking about it, I can't remember, but I watched it. Yeah. So they were doing some great stuff in, um, down in the art room and I really enjoyed that. Th that's a very important piece, our science curriculum, because inquiry is where we're going with, with the kids. It's not just right or wrong, multiple choice. It's really inquiry. Why are you doing this? Why, what's your reasoning behind it? Can you articulate it? Can you write it down in a short answer? Type it down. Or can you actually, we have math notebooks now to be able to write down your thinking. And the science is just taking the lead on that. We're way ahead of the curve. Um, also, just, as, as the non-educator in the room, what, what did you say PD? You're using um, an acronym. I'm sorry, professional development. Oh, so um, our professional <laughs> development calendar is yeah, very. I, I got it. No, I, I just sorry. I just very heavy with science. Yeah. We're doing great with science, but also to math is is becoming a real great focus here, which is wonderful. Uh, the academics. That's the fun part. That's the great part, <laughs> and that's what we do well. That's not when I say we. I mean the teachers, the educators do really well, 
and it's, it, it's always energizing to talk about that. I did put in a goal for the high school, uh, grade 7 to 12, and again, that is on science too, and what's happening there is, just for your information, the uh, science uh, department is actually developing, so our strategic plan includes um, curriculum, assessment, and special ed tiered, uh, tiered interventions. Well, the assessment piece is what's happening at the high school is they're all sitting down, all, the whole department, the science department, developing rubrics that are meaningful to students. So there's no more you get an 80%, um, whatever. Now it's the students have to reflect. This is what's expected of you, and it's the student language. This is what you need to do, and if you didn't do it, I'm putting it here, but I'm going to give you a chance to fix this one piece or, or whatever to redo it. So they're really working hard on that. And my professional practice goals are the same because I'm working really hard. Um, I'm a year two with the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents uh, and the DESE New Superintendent Induction Program. And I'm in year two and I'm doing all those assignments and, and working on that. And also, too, I continue to work with the... Can I interrupt? Uh, How many years are there of that program? <laughs> There's actually three, but it, it, it peters off. So last year I had eight sessions and I had eight hours of coaching a month. This year I have four sessions and I get four hours of coaching a month. And then next year it's just really collaboration. It's like one or two. But it's a great program. All the superintendents in the state go through it. And there's 25 in my cohort. And then there's a new cohort this year. Cohort. I'm in cohort seven. So there were 25 superintendents hired when I was. Um, and the other, my last role is the professional network, uh, Massachusetts Association of Rural Superintendents, Connecticut Valley Superintendents Roundtable, uh, Franklin and Hampshire Superintendents Collaborative, as well as the um, Association of Regional School Districts. So, and I've uh, actually completed, um, you know, the actions, the resources, the artifacts that I'll be showing you, the benchmarks, and um, there's a lot of information on that. So. All right, great. Thank you from a distance, thanks for all the email communication oh, thank updates. You. Oh, thank you. It's yeah, nice it, it was a little rough because I, we were in a meeting in October, and last year I had eight goals. And, and I filled out these binders like this. And I was, the one thing I got back from everybody was too much, too much, too much information. Simple, keep it simple. So I handed out one piece of paper and it was really simple, but then they were like, what is it? You know, it's not telling us anything. And I'm like, but I, but I, that was um, not my best moment. So I'm just saying that. But I, uh, I went back and these are essentially the same, but they're more fleshed out and I think they're more, uh, they, they just have more accountability, more, um, I'm responsible for telling you more. But I don't want to give too much information because I think that that overshadows, you know, uh, you don't need an overachiever. You need to know what's happening and you need to know the facts. And um, the district's in great hands, the district's moving forward, the admin team is excellent. And uh, so I'm looking forward to the budget season. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> I'm gonna, we are going to vote, yes? Um, so, um, it's another thing that we are asking to vote on, to vote that we approve of these goals and this action plan for this year. Move to approve the superintendent's goals 2017-18. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you to your co-conspirators on the committee. Well done. Great job. Um, okay, I do not have any uh, report to give. And Ken uh, is, apologizes for not being here. Uh, what came up last minute, so we don't have a collaborative report. And so we're going to turn it over to you, Tina. You have more time for me. Yes, you betcha. Yeah, you got about three minutes. Um. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of <coughs> Wait, uh, great work going on in school. Um, believe it or not, even this time of year, we're really busy. 
But the um, coin drive, I remember the Hurricane Harvey coin drive that was carried back in September, that um, brought in $763.70 for the Red Cross and the Humane Society. So thank you, families. That's pretty good. Um, coffee Connection, we continue to strengthen that, and we've um, incorporated some talk topics. This last month, Superowski, our OT, came in, and she <coughs> did an overview of executive functioning topics, and she's going to do a more in-depth training um, in February. Our next Coffee Connection is January 29th at 8.30, so come join us. Uh, math, Louise spoke a lot about math, uh, so I'll skip over that. And the Collaboration for Success, which that committee that uh, teachers have formed to help strengthen that collaboration with families. And one of the topics that was most interested to families was math also. And we have a date, so the Family Math Night will be on March 14th coming up. Pi uh, Day. Pi Sorry. Day, yeah. It's on there. <laughs> it's on there. Sorry. That's okay. And then um, just a little piece of data is that um, high engagement drives learning and predicts school success. So we're happy to see that in 90 to 100 percent of our uh, learning walks that we did, 81 percent of our students, no, in 81 percent, sorry, of our learning walks that we did throughout the building, 90 to 100 percent of our students were engaged. So that's a nice little snapshot to see. Um, and that's kudos to our teachers. And then if you turn it over, <laughs> put a lot of stuff happening, so I'll highlight it. So in pre-K, they're finishing up the long-term study on honeybees. And I love that um, Susie and Ryan put in here that they're becoming experts. <laughs> a pun. Um, who doesn't love a good pun, right? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, and kindergarten has been participating in a writing workshop and they're fully engaged in a reading program, Literacy Footprints. In first grade, um, they're celebrating, celebrating the winter season um, using geometry, social studies, and science, making gingerbread houses and creating solstice projects. In second grade, Ms. Graves' class has been engineering catapults. I wonder what that's looking like this time of year. <laughs> Ping pong balls, cotton balls. <laughs> Anyways, um, in third grade, they have an author uh, study, Raw Doll. Is that how you say it? Okay. And fourth grade, a publishing party is coming. Um, Jen Smith's class is all the fourth grade. I just have Jen Smith. Does anybody know? She's ready. They're, 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 ready. they're ready at different times. Okay. So. And then the Hitchcock Center has been collaborating around the science um, and energy unit. And fifth grade went to the Deerfield Academy um, to study the planetariums. And we just concluded our Scholastics Book Fair. So we're busy. <laughs> Work going on. So you see our teachers? They're like looking energetic. Yeah, where did it fall down? I know. It's been I, the year has gone so super fast. All right, great, thank you. You're welcome for that. Um, I believe if uh, you do you have a report in addition to what you told us already? Yes. No? No, just that we're working on the budget. We're working diligently on the budget and uh, are you anticipating new money to spend on lots of new and exciting projects that you've talked about? Well, it's it, it's going to be good. It, it'll 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 be really collaborative, and I'm really excited about it yeah. to share it and have everybody have a piece. And I'm excited this year. And is there any more news on the rural um, superintendents thing that was being spearheaded by was it the Moma guy? Yeah, trying to Botticani. get our districts there, all sort of. A leg up on some funding? Or? Uh, well, um, there is a meeting. See, there was a teleconference meeting in November. So it was, I believe it was in the middle of the state that they, they were all invited to, to uh, like a webinar to join. And it didn't work. So I was really disappointed in that. And I mentioned it, and he said, yeah, it didn't work. I did go to a Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools uh, meeting in where the, uh, the state auditor presented some information on regional schools and funding, which doesn't, but I have kept you abreast of it. And at the Frontier meeting, I'm going to ask them to, I'm going to ask the committee to allow me to have a letter sent so that we can get, the law states that we should get 100% of regional transportation money back and why not, we're around 70%. The, uh, at the same meeting, Mike Bonacani talked about his proposals. Uh, there's a lot of um, grants that are 
kind of going around about uh, sharing of services. So for instance, one superintendent for two districts. Um, so case in point, Pioneer is their superintendent's leaving. It's a very small district. Orange is looking at maybe help, you know, being part of their, uh, with the business manager and the superintendent over in Mohawk. So they're, they're all, it, it's all kind of this yoking thing going on uh, where they're all trying to figure out how they can come together, save money, and provide different districts with, with the same services. The, the thing about Frontier is, uh, Frontier and Union 38, I haven't really jumped on that. Uh, simply because our district is, is very complex. Our five school districts is very complex. We're larger than uh, a lot of those small districts up along um, that route too. And I just, frankly, when the, some of the things are talking about sharing IT services. Well, we have our IT department here, he's great, but there's no way we could share him. The towns want to share, but he's so busy with what we have and what we're paying for that our district is so full of, so full with the needs that what we're doing, because we are so large and varied, that we're not really too involved. Although I do go to the meetings and I do meet with Mike and I, you know, he's got some good ideas and he's really working. The idea is to really get a heightened awareness of the rural school districts in Western Massachusetts. Boston seems pretty focused on, you know, the big cities, Springfields, the Holyoaks, the Boston, and now of course South Southbridge. I think it's. But uh, as far as uh, you, you have to understand, there's the, the City Coalition, and there's the Massachusetts Association of Suburban Schools, and then there's the Mass Association of Rural Schools, and we're all out there asking, please notice us. Uh, so, but I do keep abreast of what's going on. I just. I haven't seen any way that <coughs> what we have, we would be kind of giving more than getting, and then we would be on the losing. And kind mm -hmm. of, so. In terms of those collaborations with other yeah. districts, yeah. yeah. At this point, now things things could change, <coughs> and, but they had talked about business services, superintendencies, and uh, IT. All right, anybody have anything else to say, comment on? No? Okay, no. then uh, I think we should adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. It's 6.55. <laughs> Not yeah. 7.55. No. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. We got those fixed. All right. You're wonderful. Okay.